Gregory. I'm a teacher of the Alexander Technique, and this is an introduction to Alexander Technique for bass and guitar players. I've been working with guitarists and bassists for almost two decades at the Institute of Contemporary Music Performance, or ICMP for short. And in this video, I want to give you some helpful tips as musicians. To do this, we are going to be looking at one or two basic body facts that will change the way you think of your body and we'll be looking at habit patterns. Since our habits follow us around in everything that we do, becoming more aware of your habits is a good place to start as a musician. The good news is the body is designed to balance in space no matter what your habits are. In fact, if you didn't interfere in any way, your body would always choose to gently align the head, the shoulders and the hips, whether sitting, standing or in ordinary movement. So it makes sense that if we could just get out of our own way a little bit more often, the body would do all of the balancing for us. But how can we do that? By understanding just a few basic body facts, you can make powerful changes to the way you think and move, both as a musician and in your everyday life. I always say your body is your first instrument and your guitar or bass is your second instrument. So if you pay a little more attention to your first instrument, it will have a knock-on effect with your playing. Two for the price of one, pretty good. So let's start by looking at sitting. Now you probably haven't given much thought to where to sit on a chair, but there are three places to sit on a chair. The front, the middle, and the back. And if you sit at the front of the chair, that's great. Your legs are free, and your spine can support itself. But how can you maintain this without getting tired? Well, first you need to be aware of your sitting bones. If you place your hands palm up underneath your body, you will feel two rounded bony bumps. These are your sitting bones. And you should try to be on or near the point at the highest part you can feel um, so that your spine can align. So for instance, here, I'm on the backs of my sitting bones and I can no longer align my three joints. Whereas here, I can by staying at the tops. But how can you stay here and not get tired? Because most of us have shortened hip flexor muscles from sitting so much, I'll show you a little exercise you can do to gently lengthen the muscles where the legs meet the body. So there will be a very subtle stretch around the groin, the sides of the legs, and the backs underneath where your leg meets your backside. To do this, we are going to gently hinge forwards, keeping the ear, shoulder and hip aligned. And we really only need to do this for about 20 seconds. So make sure that you're not rounding your back like that, or that you're not holding on here in your lower back. And you can let go of your sitting bones down to the chair and let the arm weight fall down through your thighs. And here's where it really becomes an Alexander Technique exercise. You want to really ask your brain to allow this gentle stretch. It's much more subtle than a traditional stretch. And rather than doing anything, you are asking your brain to allow the muscles to release. And you, when you come back to upright posture, it should feel easier to stay this way. So now my question to you, is do you sit or stand to practice? Many of the guitarists and bassists that I work with only sit to practice. And when you think that most gig situations you'll be standing to play, this doesn't make much sense. Why not practice good standing and guitar bass practice at the same time? It will build your stamina for those gigs. However, if you do a little bit of both, I recommend that you have two separate straps, one at sitting length and one at standing length. It's not helpful to practice seated without a strap. You'll end up cradling the instrument to stop it from falling, and you'll be using all kinds of additional muscle tension that you don't really need just to hold the, the instrument in place. If, like most musicians, you have more than one instrument, you could have one with a shorter strap for sitting and another for standing practice. It's possible, but not very usual, to have the same strap height when sitting or standing. So while we're on the subject of straps, let's mention strap height. Here's an exaggerated illustration to explain what I mean. If your strap is really high, it tends to affect your right hand technique. 
if the strap is really, really low, it starts to affect your fretting hand. There's a sweet spot for every guitar and bassist somewhere between those two points. So experiment with this to find out what works best for you. So standing to practice is good, at least for some of your practice routine. The golden rule is to remember that your body is your first instrument and that your guitar or bass is your second instrument. So the instrument should come to you, not the other way around. I'll demonstrate what I mean. Here's me coming to the instrument. I've molded myself to it. My hips are forward. You can't see my knees, but I'm locking my knees out. My back is rounded and I'm throwing my head forward. And here's me keeping my integrity and allowing the instrument to come to me. Also, on the subject of standing, you could try playing against a wall, just for the sake of finding out more. To do this, stand roughly six inches away from the wall and gently fall back to the wall. Your legs should be slightly bent. Now check yourself out. Are your hips and shoulder blades touching the wall? Do your shoulder blades come off the wall to move towards the instrument to play? Or do they stay on the wall? Do you feel you want to twist your body but can't because the wall prevents it? If so, you probably do twist to play when you aren't up against a wall. Is there a big gap behind your back? Here. If so, you're probably raising your chest towards the instrument. So you can gently ask the front of your body to drop so that your back will make a better contact with the wall. Make sure you're continuing to think about your knees because you can easily lock them back and that will tilt the pelvis forwards and your ribs will raise again. So your back doesn't need to be completely on the wall, but a large gap in the middle of your back is not helpful because you won't be able to breathe as well and your arms will be in a different position in relation to the instrument. And just playing like this now and again will give you a gentle reminder of what you're doing with yourself and your habit patterns. Here's a few more things to look out for. Does your left shoulder drop down when you go to reach the fretboard? It's actually not necessary, but most guitar and bass players do this. Do you poke your head forward to look at your fretting hand? Why not keep your head balanced, tilt, and look from a distance. It feels like you're a long way from the fretboard, but that's really only your habit. You'll get used to it with time and save your neck muscles. And can you notice any other habits you didn't realize you had? When we were on the wall, we looked at not raising the ribs. Because when you raise your ribs, your arms can't really get to the instrument in quite the same way. So by dropping your ribs, you'll be more in your back and your arms will have somewhere stable to come forward from. At first you may not notice much, but with time you'll become more aware. Practicing in front of a mirror is a great way to become more aware, and you'll get better, faster at spotting your habits. You could also try videoing yourself playing to improve your habit radar. And finally, don't just check for habits when you're playing. Remember that the habits that you have in everyday life will also show up in your playing technique. So how do you sit to use your smartphone or your laptop? Don't poke your head forwards and downwards to see your smartphone and try raising the laptop screen to eye level on a few boxes and then have a separate keyboard and mouse at table height. Since we spend so much time using our phones and laptops, this can have a dramatic effect on your overall posture, which in turn will affect your playing. The final thing that I would like to show you is the Alexander Technique Active Rest Position or Semi-Supine. And basically, this is lying on the floor with a small stack of books under your head, your knees bent and your hands resting on your abdomen. I'm going to show you the position in just a few moments, but the benefits of lying in semi-supine are so many that there would be not enough time here to tell you about all of them, but mainly aligning your spine each day by lying on the floor this way and thinking of letting go of tension, your body will become better and better at letting go of tension. And when you get up from the floor, you're more likely to be able to maintain the alignment of your head, shoulders, and hips that we spoke about at the beginning of this video. So I'll show you the position now.
resting on some books. Every person needs a different height of books, so find the uh, position that's most comfortable for you with, this, with the right number of books. It's somewhere between two to four inches. If your chin feels like it's up against your chest, it means you have too many books. And if you feel as if your head is falling backwards, you don't have enough books. So that's the general rule of thumb. And just lie like this for 10 or 15 minutes each day. It's very good to do this before or and after a practice routine as well for a few moments. It'll just let all of the tension from practicing drain away. And if you do it before you practice, it allows you to have more awareness as you go into your practice routine. There are a lot more ways the Alexander Technique can help you both in everyday life and as a player. So if you found this session interesting, why not have a few Alexander lessons with your local teacher? It's the best way to learn. So that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and goodbye and good luck.